So I'm just gonna put a little bit here. Oh, oh, wow. That's a big upgrade already. Hey there folks, I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're gonna learn something today. Uh, I have ripped apart the Orca FPV control because I wanted to get a look at the inside and I thought I would bring you guys along for the ride. Uh, this is not gonna be a tightly edited presentation. In fact, I kind of originally thought I didn't have time to do this because I'm working on some other stuff, but I really wanted to do it. And so just imagine this is kind of more like a live stream where it's a little more off the cuff. And if that's not your style, hey, you know, I understand. So see you in the next video. Um, the number one thing I wanted to get a closer look at was the gimbals, uh, which were a little bit confusing to me and a little bit confusing to some other people um, because Orca said that they had sort of custom made these gimbals, I think uh, is what I had heard. And uh, when I tried them out, the quality didn't seem remarkable compared to some of the other gimbals uh, available on the market. So for example, the throttle has a little bit of a, a, a sound, you know, it's sticky. It doesn't have a great sort of smooth uh, feel and sound a little bit. Well, you know, not bad for radio in this price range, but certainly not remarkable. And then on this side, I'm trying not to flick it, but there you go. You can kind of hear a little, and, and you know, it's fine for gimbals in this price range. The first thing I'd point out is that the, it appears that these gimbals are designed similarly to the TBS Tango and Mambo, where there are no electronics in the gimbal itself. At least that feels, it looks to me like that way. It looks like they have a magnet here is that a magnet? Yes, that's a magnet. So they have a magnet there and the hall sensor is mounted on the circuit board. I'm trying to figure out, so we've got these two screws for adjustment of ratcheting and throttle uh, tension. We've got another screw here. That's gotta be for centering of the throttle. It doesn't seem like there's an actual tension adjustment on the gimbal though. So, that's uh, like, it has noticeably looser tension than any of the others. Uh, that may be a matter of personal preference, but now if we get down just a little bit, of, oh, this stuff is such a pain in the ass. It is so messy and so annoying to deal with. If we get down some of this damping oil, this is T05 consistency damping oil. Let's take just a little, oh my God, it's like taffy. So I'm just gonna put a little bit here and see if that transfers. Oh, oh, wow. That's a big upgrade already. So there's a lot more drag, first of all. In fact, maybe I might actually have preferred a little bit looser, a little bit softer grease, less drag. There's a lot of drag. I could, I could maybe reduce, uh, I could maybe, oh my God, it's everywhere. Mm, that is good. And now look how quiet it is. So you can hear the, the crossbar making a little noise, but the throttle itself is completely silent, completely smooth. That is, that is, just everyone should do this to their throttle if they've got a cheap radio that doesn't have really smooth plastic on the throttle slider. Uh, that is, that is really nice feel. Much, that alone would give the impression of, of much higher quality gimbals, I have to say. That's really satisfying. And then I put the radio back together and I remembered that I didn't make a note of which way the batteries go in to the radio. So Orca, if you're out there, can you tell me which the correct way to insert the batteries is? Or if anybody else out there feels like ripping their radio open to do the damping grease, before you take the batteries out, will you please make a note of which way they go in because I don't want to fry my radio. That's going to do it for this video. hope you found it useful. hope you found it entertaining or educational. Thanks so much for watching and happy flying.